The year 1904 and 5, that was the Russo Japanese War. And that time, Japan could grab all the located islands from the Russians. And that was the turning point in the world history of Asia, the position of Asia. Because the people looked at Asia now and they found that yes, a real power is rising. And what is that power? They named Japan Asian Tiger. So, and they thought that now all other countries were protesting against the suppression and oppression. Now the time has come, the Asian people will get a good support from this power. That way Japan became very powerful as well as helpful also. And the thing is that at the same time we have to see that Japan was having a very good relation with British India. So that connection also added to the Indian revolutionaries that they can get help in Japan. So in this situation when the things are moving and changing, if we go to see the world order, the picture of the world order, we will find that in America, in the United States, in San Francisco, the people are coming from India seeking job and all, especially from Punjab. In San Francisco, they made a small organization, which of course it became very big later on. In 13, 14, 1913 and 14, and they name it Gadar. Gadar means jihad, Gadar means protest, and Gadar means that you have to stand on your own fate. So this Gadar, ultimately named as a Gadar party, actually it was an organization with a majority were the, the people from Punjab, because they went to seek job and went for their living in United States. So Gadarites started their activities there, and this is the time when 1314 Gadar Party was formed in America. In India, Rashbihari Bose, who was the only one supporter of Shubhash Chandra Bose in Japan and the East Asia or the Southeast Asia, he was involved in a bomb case and escaped India without, I mean, without giving no attention to the surveillance of the British and reached Japan. By that time in Japan also, there is an organization called Black Dragon Society. And that Black Dragon Society was controlled by Toama, Japanese. He was a revolutionary. And Toama, organizing this Black Dragon Society, used to give shelter to the Indian revolutionaries. This Indian revolution is a Barkatullah, who is to teach in Tokyo University, Urdu. In Birendranath Chattopadhyay, Chatto was the elder brother of Sarojini Naidu. Uh, this Abuni Mukherjee was an independent revolutionary. And the people assembled there from Berlin Committee, that is Harambo Mitra, and also from the League Against Imperialism, which was another unit in Germany where the Indian revolutionaries are working. This was the setup in Japan and got the connection with so many people. And at the same time, by that time, the Gadarites also started coming and taking shelter in Japan because they had a plan to attack India from Southeast Asia. There's a big group who decided to attack India from Southeast Asia. So they were having their center in Japan. In the meantime, if you go to Soviet Union, the October Revolution or the Cultural Revolution was established. Lenin, apart from this Cultural Revolution, he organized Communist International, Comintern. And this Communist International was organized in 19, 
1990 and started operating with all its activities, specially giving special attention to India because they wanted to help India, the comrades at that time from the British suppression. This was the picture means the Gadarites are coming from America. The comrades of the socialist world are coming from Soviet Union and the comrades and the revolutionaries who assembled in Japan, they have started their activities in the Southeast Asia. So this is the geographical, uh, the whole uh, picture of that time. And this was a time during those days, I mean, I am going a little farther down, that Shubhash started his activities in India. He was slowly, slowly became a youth leader. Then he had been in exile in uh, this uh, Europe because of his activities. He became the number one enemy to the British. And as a result, the British took him to, uh, to give him that punishment to be in uh, Germany, Central, uh, Central Europe. So this, then Shubhash came back in 36 and 37, 38, he was working very hard and he was become one of the leaders so he had been chosen to become the president of Congress. 38 and 39 he became the president. The first time when he became the president, this was a unique example that while other presidents worked for Congress, they were not so attracted by the left, left oriented people or the Congress socialist. The Congress socialist as well as the left oriented people and the left we can say from the Communist Party, they started feeling interest in this Congress platform. But for Shubhash it became very difficult. Because after all that time he became the president of Congress as well as he was getting a big support from the Congress Socialist as well as from the Congress, uh, uh, this Communist Party. So altogether he was thinking that he had to make some platform where these left oriented people will feel little comfortable. So for that he organized forward block. Forward block came into the picture. And more or less, once these people, the left people, they found that they have got a separate platform, they started joining there. So while they were joining, they, Shubhash proposed that why can't we make that All India Revolutionary Committee. Proposal was accepted and the committee was formed in the Office of Communist Party of India, CPI, where it was. It was the 16 Queensway, presently that is Janpat, and that was the 16 Queensway was the party of the Communist Party of India, their office, party office, and Kanwa was in charge of it. He died in 1982. I met him many times in the party office, but that time I was not very uh, known to this research and all. He was in charge of the whole thing, and the at the present moment, that 16 uh, Janpath is Meridian Hotel. You will find there in Janpath, it has converted into Meridian Hotel. Anyway, that time it was the party office and the people from different parts of India used to convey their messages there in that. So, they decided to give a code name. So, the center has become Mary. That was the, what to say, the cent central force of the whole left oriented revolutionaries who used to convey their messages from different parts of India and later on that has been connected with the other parts of uh, India. Anyway, this was the thing started in 38. After finishing one year presidentship again the sp with a special request he had to become the second time he got a chance. But as you know there were a lot of controversies, there was a lot of uh, this, uh, uh, I mean, voting and uh, co committee meeting and all, and that made him to step down from that uh, uh, position. He thought that if I, be fo if I keep on fighting with this sort of things, I won't be able to work for my country. So, and at the same time, 
he was in mind that if I stay back in India, I won't be able to do anything. Either I will be under house arrest or I will be behind bar and I have to sit just like that. And what will happen that time, we won't be able to get the idea. So he was thinking to leave the country. For leaving the country means he needs a lot of contacts. So let us come back to the Gadarites. These Gadarites, when they used to come from San Francisco, they never used to enter India. They used to stay in the northwest frontier and used to control that part. And at the same time, they used to be in the Southeast Asia also, where Rashbihari Bush was operating. So with these connections and with the connection of the Communist Party leaders, she was in mind, Shubhash, that he had to leave. I'm very sorry to say that nowadays people show the car which was standing in the Netaji Research Bhavan. And there is a story that he took this car and to 26 January he had to leave in 1941. Everything is all right. But the thing is, why? Who organized all these things? That is the most important thing which is never told anywhere. There's the whole story runs like that, that the Communist Party leaders, Ajay Ghosh and Akbar Mia, Niranjan Talib, they all had a talk with Achar Singh Chena. Achar Singh Chena is the leading figure of Gadarites, Gadar Party. And Achar Singh Chena had a very good contact with the Soviet Communist Party. And he was so close to Stalin and the party itself, that his name was Larkin. Nobody called him as Achar Singh Chena, he was known as Larkin. And this Larkin used to make a very frequent visit to India. He used to come very often to India and used to talk with the leaders. In this manner, slowly, slowly, consulting with Akbar Mia, Niranjan Talib and Ajay Ghosh and others, he thought that if Shubhash wants to leave, then he can have a talk with the Communist Party of Soviet Union, CPSU. He will have a talk with the embassy people of the Kabul, Afghanistan. He will have a talk with the embassy people of Italy, because Italian ambassador Korani, he had a Russian wife. And that's why only that Russian wife requested the Russian ambassador to issue a passport in the name of Orlando Mazzato, to Shubhash. Shubhash's name became an Italian name because of this. And Korani also used to make a very frequent visit to India to meet the leaders. And especially he used to meet Shubhash. Those were the years 37, 38, 39. So the plan was plotted long back that they were planning to take him out from India. Support is mainly from the Communist Party of Soviet Union and at the same time, a full support from the Italian side. Germans were also agreed, of course, and Germans, but German, the, as a nation, they are a bit stiff and they were not very sure about the whole position. They were agreed, but the agreement was, if you go through the papers, you will find that agreement is there, but agreement is not very, not very clear like the Soviet and the Italians. They said that, of course, we are going to take, take you under certain conditions. Sometimes they're telling that we must need some permission from Germany. This sort of things went on. But Soviet clearly said that, yes, you can come. So this was in this situation. Shubhash had to leave. Achat Singh Chena or Larkin, with the help of Ajay Ghosh and Akbar Mia, Niranjan Talib and others, they got the border clear. And they requested this uh, Bhagatram Talwar because he used to know many languages. So they requested Bhagatram Talwar to accompany him. And Bhagatram Talwar is the member of Kirti Kishan Party. And Kirti Kishan Party later on joined with the Communist Party. That those were the communists on the border. And Bhagatram Talwar also had a very good relation with the with the uh, this uh, uh, embassy, Soviet embassy in Kabul. 
And so the structure of the Soviet embassy is something different from other embassies. Soviet people used to have a, even till the disintegration, now up to 1992, their, their, their uh, whole structure is, ambassador of course is there, but there should be somebody from KGB head, one side, and there should be somebody from the party head. So anything they are going to decide, that decision will take place only in consultation with the KGB people, KGB head and the party. Ambassador is just a puppet. Ambassador will listen and sign the papers which will come from Kremlin. The same picture was there in Afghanistan. And Ambassador Mikhailkov and this uh, KGB uh, leader or head, his pseudonym was Zaman. And Zaman used to look after the whole thing and used to give all the instruction to Bhagatram Talwar. So this is the picture. And in this situation, Shubhash crossed the border with the help of the Gadarites. Money was given, need a money, they never speak about the money. I mean, all the expenses was borne by our former defense minister, Baldev Singh. Baldev Singh was the, actually Baldev Singh was a Gadarite. He was a, he was from the Gadar party. And he took the whole responsibility and to provide all the support, financial support. His nephew is still with the Akali Dal, elder brother's son. And uh, actually he has got a diary where you can get all the details. So twice or thrice I tried with uh, his nephew to get hold of the diary. He said, what to do with the truth? What you are going to do with the truth? I said, nothing, just to tell the truth that the money and the financial support was given by Baldev Singh. And for that, Nehru had to give him that prize post to become a defense minister. That time, the cabinet, if you are going to see, each person has got something or other at the background. Otherwise, I'm sorry to say I'm not criticizing, but Baldev Singh didn't have that much of capacity to control the defense side. But only for this, he, Nehru had to, I mean, offer that post. So, this way, getting the money from uh, Baldev Singh, support from Communist Party of Soviet Union, along with the Larkin and Bhagatram Talwar and all, uh, this Shubash entered Kabul. There's a lot of stories went on and that uh, Bhagat, they were forced to ask Bhagatram to write a book about it, his stay in Kabul and all. But I find that not a single archival document is corroborating, not a single event being presented in that book. So that way I would like to discard his, that book because I feel that primary source of information is more important than any other information what I gathered from the both Soviet, Italian and German archives. Even the German archives gave the detail of his uh, this crossing the border and all. Now we come that how he crossed it and where he went. 1941 January, Shivash Chandra Bush accompanied by Bhagat from Talwar of Kittikishan party crossed the northwestern front border of India and reached Kabul. In Delhi, a wireless station codenamed Mary, a very high quality channel was set up at 16 Queensway Road, Janpat. Kabul was codenamed Oliver, Berlin was codenamed Tom. Russians have regular radio contact with Tom, Oliver and Mary. So, Russian was having the whole setup which Germans were not having. Before Bose's departure from Kabul to Berlin via Moscow, Bhagatram Talwar was codenamed Silver Moon. Russians used to call him Rom. Silver Moon started his operation as a double agent with Axis Allied powers, whereas his total dedication was to the KGB officer whose code name was Zaman of Soviet Embassy in Kabul. That means this 
Silva Muni is always in contact with uh, Zaman. Whatever is hap happening, he used to convey there. Silva Moon had regular contact with All India Revolutionary Committee, that is Mary in Delhi, and his confident agent was Manmohan Nath Kaura of Communist Party of India, who was alive up to 1982. With this, Shubhash started his uh, activities in uh, Afghanistan. Now the question is that why this delay? Soviets are supposed to take him to uh, this uh, uh, Moscow and the activities will start with the Comintern and all that was the program. There was an information from Kremlin that there the Baku oil field will be attacked by the Britishers. As a result, they said that of course we can accept Shubhash, but not permanently, we can give you the transit visa. You can go is a transit visa to Germany for the time being, and then we will we can bring you back. So the whole thing got little confused, and the Shubhash also didn't know what to do. And uh, regularly, Rom is attending Zaman. Zaman is telling that you be rest assured, all the care will be taken by us. You are our people, and we will help you till the end. But at the present moment. Because of this news, the, our government is a bit disturbed and we don't know how to organize it. So this was one of the reasons that Shubhash had to get, he got the transit visa for seven days. And from there, from staying in Moscow for seven days, he pushed off to Berlin. That time in 42 uh, April, 1st April, he uh, arrived in Berlin. So on his this particular seven days papers are still with the secret service, not only KGB, the most secret, uh, this uh, archive of uh, Russian Federation. And as a result, we are trying to get hold of it, that what exactly happened. Only thing we got from the Russian archive, that Shuvash wrote a letter after reaching Germany, wrote a letter to Molotov, and that later he is giving thanks uh, to him and to his government and all that taking care of him and they are going to give help and all. So that shows that he was there for seven days. But what exactly the conversation went and what were the topics and what they were planning that we are yet to get. We haven't got it as yet. When Shubhash arrived in Germany <clears throat> in the morning, after some time, I mean later, I mean second part of the day, there was a circular from the Indian de the department of the German government that be careful, he is a Soviet agent. Be careful of this man, he is a Soviet agent. That Kepler, Warman, they started discussing about him. They are all uh, belong to the India department, Von Trott. They started discussing that uh, we should be little a lot and we should be little uh, careful about him. So one can make it out that right from the beginning the Hitler government uh, didn't pay much attention and didn't believe him and uh, didn't want to depend on him. That was very clear. Of course Shubhash didn't know about it but Shubhash right from the beginning from India he was depending on the Soviet and his mind is there that he had to get the full support from the Soviet. This is the picture was going on in Germany and uh, Kabul, Afghanistan. Now what is happening in Japan? Rashwari Bose, the organizer with the Black Dragon Society, started contacting all the civilians who are willing to join for the India's freedom. Not uh, physically going to the battlefield, but mentally they should be prepared. They should have that mental preparation to get their country free. So, and uh, Rash Bihari Bush gave that name, Indian Independence League, IIL. And series of meetings took place in Siam, that time, uh, this uh, ba Bangkok and uh, other places, Singapore and all. And they were discussing elaborately what will be the role of the civilian of this Indian Independence League. 
One thing is that the financial support is needed. Second, the moral support is needed. And thirdly, if worse come to the worst, they should be prepared to come and join the battlefield also. So many people, they agreed, and Indian Independence League was formed very normally and smoothly by 1942. Then the question rose that, of course, now who is going to shoulder the responsibility? Everybody was asking me at that time, Rashberi Bush was the president. Rashberi said that I'm aging and I don't have that much of experience also. We must call Shubash from there, from Germany. And by that time, Shubash was traveling to Germany, to Italy and negotiating so many things. That's an absolutely different story. I mean, it was he was making Indian Legion there. He was very active there at that time. And Rashberi was active with the Indian Independence League and thinking that what will be, I mean, how to operate it. In the meantime, Tojo started attacking the Southeast Asian countries and got hold of British Indian Army 60,000, 60 to 70,000. There are certain mentions that 90,000. Exact uh, is very difficult to say, but in between 60,000 to 90,000, Indian, British Indian Army being captured by Tojo got back those lands, Andaman and Nicobar, and this, they said that uh, you, this, uh, this can be, I mean, uh, this uh, Andaman and Nicobar uh, been also captured by Tojo. So this, the operation field was going on in the Southeast Asia. Here in Germany also, Tojo, uh, I mean, Shubhash and others were operating, and Rashbihari all the time telling that send the Japanese general uh, to negotiate with Shubhash and to bring him back. And Shubhash was also day by day was getting little confused in interaction with the uh, Germans and Hitler. He was not getting appointment with Hitler. And while going to Italy, the Germans are susp uh, suspecting, suspicion was there. So he was a bit confused that time and he thought that better to depend on Soviet people, and there's no question. In the meantime, what happened? The non-aggression pact was broken, 39. 41, it's all right, you have broken the non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union, the Germans, but they attacked on 41. So after the attack and after all this of game going on in the battlefield, Shubash was in a double mind that what exactly will be his position to do. So Shubash was not very much depending on Hitler. That is sometimes people say that there, he was very much depending on Hitler because he could make it out that uh, it won't be easy to deal with these Germans because Germans are galloping in every respect and being a friend of Soviet Union, now they are attacking Soviet Union. Poland they have already attacked and in near future they are going to attack. Of course, what you want, they attacked. So this situation to, I mean, uh, Rashbihari thought that this is the high time to bring back Shubhash in the Southeast Asia. So let us go for the Netaji's Secret Service on episode 2. So after getting Andaman and Nicobar Islands, the Provisional Government of Free India and Indian National Army staff were always in constant touch with some underground political organizations in India. Major Swami, Bose's private secretary, was controlling the channels of communication. Bose had to come back to Southeast Asia, took the shoulder the responsibility of Indian National Army, which was given by Tojo to uh, Rashbihari, and this is the story it is coming. Inui, who was the head of the Japanese intelligence organization in Afghanistan, received Silver Moon's military information through German sources. So if we go to see the picture, Bose is situating in Burma, but he is controlling both. He has got the Japanese link named Rhino, and they are contacting Mary in Delhi. And Bose's link named Elephant, they are contacting Germany. It's a very interesting story, like a detective story, that Bose is sitting in Burma, but Japanese link is called Rhino. Through Rhino, he is getting information from Delhi, Mary's, whatever is happening in India. And German link is Elephant, 
and that they are getting whatever is happening in Germany and what was the attitude of the leader and what exactly they are thinking about his future, Bose's action. So this way Bose also came to know in Burma that his future in Germany is, I mean, uh, he won't get any help from there anymore. So he was totally depending through the Japanese source to marry, to get the, all the information from the All India Revolutionary uh, Parties and all the informations from the Communist Party of India. Now, Communist Party of India, I don't want to discuss here much more, but they were not very sure about all their activities. Of course, they conveyed all the messages here in Delhi, Mary. But at the same time, they had some, some sort of aversion or some sort of restriction or some uh, thing against Shubhash. P.C. Joshi, uh, couldn't, I mean the secretary, party secretary, in his all archival documents are showing that he was not much willing to take the leadership of Shubhash. Actually, Shubhash has taken the leadership, of course, with the 90,000 army, not much, with the Indian National Army. And he got the land, the provisional government, Arzi, Hukumati, Azad, Hendin, Andaman and Nikabar, and the operation is going on. But the excellent operation, which was absolutely, I mean, this was hardly, very few people know because this is in the American archive. And one American general, by birth, he's a Greek. Fortunately or unfortunately, one of my student days, I met him in Greece long back. Somehow or other, he came to know that I'm doing research on it. So he sent a message to somebody and mail also that if you are willing to get the exact picture of that what had happened during time of the, how Shubhash controlled it, all the, all the details and all the signaling and all the, the military, I mean armed forces, uh, personal, private things are with us. But I won't be able to part with everything, but I will give you certain things which you will understand that how Shubhash operated. So here, the, another one is the other channels which I am leaving. Now let us come the operation. How Shubhash was operating from Burma. So there are many good secret services. BATS means the radio equipped spies organized by spies by the Japanese. BATS. And the operation was, this is the most important and the heavy operation bats and the bats were operating by the Japanese of course Indians were there and they were divided into two one in Assam and one in Bengal Calcutta Assam is named Marmalade and Calcutta was named Aul Marmalade there are many people I have found these names you know whatever names he sent me those names are corroborated here in this national archives but I couldn't check that who are they this name, the list is there, but after getting it from America, I could understand that they are the part of bats and they are the part of marmalade and they operated in Assam. And Calcutta's is Aul and there are also Das, Hari Singh, Kansiram, Look, lot of people they worked in Calcutta, many places they worked and you will get it in this SB special branch and intelligence branch which were not worked out properly. And to tell you, I'm very sorry to say that especially in Calcutta, these things are slowly, slowly people are trying to destroy or to hide or to burn, something like that is going on. Since they are very much, I don't know what to say, they are not liking the idea that why she is bringing up all the details. Better to forget and forgive the whole chapter. And Assam, of course, I think they are having, because recently I was in Assam and one boy is working, he said that, Madam, I'm getting the names, all the names. So we have to see the, who are the people who worked in Marmalade in Assam and who are the people who worked in Calcutta's Aul batch. Then the Raja. Raja is the Air Force in Calcutta. Air Force base was made very perfect, first with the Germans. And then when the Germans were have some doubts that Silver Moon was having a relation with Russian, they backed out. But by that time, this air force was built up. As a result, the air force in Calcutta, there are certain points where Raja was working. 
there was a big another uh, code was travel travel was came to puri and from orissa down they wanted to work there so in that travel group there was uh, i mean uh, haridas mitra he was son in law of shubhash's eldest sister and uh, bela's wife and eldest sister he was caught red handed there and britishers decided to execute him and his life was saved by gandhi ji his personal inter interference at least to save life of haridas mitra and haridas mitra was the, uh, the son in law of shubhash's eldest sister and there are others also pavitra mohan rai pavitra mohan rai at least he came and he spoke a little and uh, very soon very uh, re, uh, i mean in summer in july there will be a road will be named after pavitra mohan rai then this coming the southern part trotter mouth of kaveri river i'm sorry to say that i didn't get much what to say financial support also and that, that's why i couldn't work in these areas in the, this this should be worked in the state archives you know all the things in the special branch of state archives are there the trotter is the mouth of kaveri river so we have to uh, i mean to uh, scan it scanning is needed in the south india then the pawn broker that is the kathiawara coast that is also south hat trick malabar coast so these agents name are needed and they are very much in the special branch and intelligence branch of these states following the river one can get it but unfortunately i couldn't work in the south india so i don't have much knowledge of it but i got the names only then there's a full map you might have got it huh? <clears throat> now the people must say that how it worked i mean so the japanese <clears throat> let us take ussr the person who was working is mikhail andreevich alekberdov he was a kgb officer his code name is zaman germany the, they are also working zugenbuller and witzel japan representative was inui britain the representative is jenkin and bose rom as a silver moon so the whole structure if you are going to see one side is the axis power and the other is the allied and bose in the middle along with his silver moon and with the help of this mary and uh, delhi they worked together of course japan helped here very much otherwise without inui it was difficult to operate also so these are the five countries with five heads they worked in the game plan of second world war but it is that time they couldn't make it out this is it is really a, a what to say terrific game there was going on i will just read out the uh, zaman's report because zaman's gave a report in 1944 that is a top secret document with details about rom's stay in kabul may 1 and 24 1944 rom had been required to be in india establishing connection with tom berlin and oliver kabul Two months ago, Moscow requested to send Rom to Kabul, but the head of the British intelligence service, Jenkin, replied, "They greatly needed Rom to carry out some measures regarding the Japanese." See, the Britishers never knew that Rom is the agent of USSR. That's the funniest part of it, because Jenkin, the MI2 officer, MI5 also officer, Jenkin, he was requesting the Soviet to send Rom. Rom informed us Russians that in India, in Delhi, he had been constantly away of the ciphered correspondence among Mary, Tom, and Oliver. Berlin has every reason to believe that the Russians have a radio contact with Tom, Oliver, and Mary, and that they also know their ciphers because Berlin thinks it plausible 
that the Russians had given the ciphers to the British. So all the confusions are going on there. Zaman wanted to install a radio transmitter in the central part of India, having connected with Burma airfield. Flight details will be passed over through Azad Hindustan. Two days before takeoff, Azad Hindustan will transmit the following password, 50A Bengal, two days. This I have got it in the special branch in Calcutta, but I have to see in Madhya Pradesh also. Their, their archives has to consult it, otherwise without corroboration you cannot claim the truth. On the eve of the takeoff, Azad Hindustan will transmit the following password, 50A Assam one day, meeting Rom, Zugenviller and Inui. That means sil silver will be there, Japanese will be there and the Germans will be there and this record has been shielded, stored in Assam special branch archive. So uh, about Assam I know but I have to go through Madhya Pradesh because Bengal I'm getting but uh, Madhya Pradesh must be consulted. Inui inquired whether the Indians were expecting that the Japanese would attack India after the rainy season. Intelligence here were pretty skeptical about this but the general opinion was that the Japanese would take action. So this is the action Zubin Muller German Kabul, the India, Burma, Rom, and Japanese Inui. And that way, the whole thing worked. In addition to that, worked the radio station. Radio station started working in 1943 in Moscow. Because the one Gadarite, he stayed back in Moscow, and the announcement and all these things went in uh, Urdu and the broadcasting about the war. Just imagine in Moscow, the broadcasting doing it in favor of Indian National Army and that was through Tashkent and Waziristan came to Calcutta and India. People who that time listened the radio, they didn't know that from where this announcement is coming and from where this uh, radio is speaking, but this got the direct connection with this. And Moscow radio played a very vital role, very vital role for this broadcast and all. And all the news and all the information has been passed. In this connection, I would like to tell you one very interesting event of my experience. That time I was in Moscow, practically every year I was going and collecting material. So I used to work in the uh, uh, Moscow radio time to time in Bengali section. So people mostly, they know, know me, even today also they know me. So I just went to the Moscow radio station to find out the footage, what are the things I can get it from there. So I went to the boy, the person who is in charge of it, Alec. Alec said, what you are talking? I said, I just, I don't want the footage. I just want the numbers and what, are the, what was the topic, the title of the topic will do. I don't want to listen if you don't have time. He said, my dear Puravi, I tell you one thing. Downstairs in the third floor, I was in the ninth floor. He said, downstairs in the third floor, Japanese have come and they have already bought the, all the footages during the war regarding, uh, related to India and all from the Moscow station. That means from the India section. Whatever footage they got it from the India section of the Moscow radio, they have already they are signed and they have already paid the money and they are taking it back to their country. I said, all right, Alec, I don't mind. Let them take. But can I get the information of the whole thing? He said, you see, dossier, inventory has been given to them. Now we won't be able to give you. If you write anything in your book, you won't be able to mention the dossier and inventory. I said, you just give me a chance to have a look. He said, all right, you wait, let them go. We can say that you, they will come to collect all the things tomorrow. So these people left around 5.36 in the evening. And then he allowed me to enter and I went through it and collected many more information. Even Shubhash was passing all the information to the Soviet people through this uh, radio connection. All these are there. But fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know exactly at the present moment where are these footages. 
but I'm going to chase it definitely to get hold of them. And the broadcast played a very important role, especially the uh, this uh, what it calls this uh, uh, Russian side where they were getting the details. So coming to the I mean regarding the attack through Arakan and going through the Chinwi River and all, we had a very good seminar organized there in ICHR. Uh, it was a national seminar, three-day seminar, and participants were around 22 participants, both from the armed forces, both from the civilians, professors, military history uh, uh, specialists, they all participated and they presented their papers. Papers are ready, uh, introduction is ready, concept note was mine, that's why the, uh, the server uh, chairperson agreed to organize this three-day seminar. They liked it very much. Everything is ready, but we are not getting a chance for a publisher. I don't know the rules and regulations of ICHR because the seminar took place last year, uh, February, and it is about to be one and a half year or more than that. And we finished our job. Editing, everything is ready with an introduction, everything. But uh, we are just waiting to publish it. Where many things came out because there was a big fight between the armed forces people and the civilians and the professors. They were not agreeing because they were theoretician. And these people were, you know, they took active part in the battlefield. They were not agreeing. Anyway, let us see if these 22 papers come out. At least we will get some information. But I would like to add here. You see, after the war and after our independence, Nehruji thought that they are going to bring out the volumes beyond uh, India's independence. So he made a request to Professor Prithul Chandra Gupta, that time he was a lecturer of Calcutta University, to compile the history of the Indian National Army. And he had been taken to in Lien from Calcutta to Simla. Uh, Institute of Advanced Studies, they say. That time it was a strategic studies. And he gave three years time to write. And Nehru said that I'm going to supply you. By the way, uh, Professor Gupta is my brother-in-law. So uh, he, uh, Nehru said that uh, he is going to supply all the detailed materials. So Professor Gupta got all the detailed materials and everything. He sat there and started writing. And time to time, the ICS officers, they used to visit Simla. They used to go through it and say that is a brilliant work is going on. It is a volume of TypeScript, say 487 pages. All the details are there because all the original, mostly all the original papers been inducted there. So after completing it, he came down. I mean, Nehru had met him and they discussed about him. So Nehru said that don't worry. This will be published soon. That he submitted in 1951. Until today, it is still a classified document. And it is residing in this uh, Arkipuram, uh, this archive, military archive. So when I started this research, my brother-in-law was that time no more, but going through all his details and diaries and all, I found it. But his personal copy was, couldn't be found. That is the tragedy. Then somehow or other, the director and all of this uh, Arkipuram, uh, they were kind enough. They said, all right, you can come and have a look of it. But don't copy, have a look. So I went through, I sat there for seven days at a stretch and went through it. The tragedy is, you know, he concluded that after considering all the details of the information and all, this much I can say, or this is my personal conclusion, that Shubash didn't die in that plane crash. He just left for Soviet Union. And for that reason, I believe it is still in that uh, classified document. That is also a request to you people, that if you can do something with that, the history of INA by Pratul Chandra Gupta, which was submitted to Nehru in 1951. Since then, it is lying there. 
and it came out and it had a real debate in our seminar. But even then we couldn't do anything, ICHR couldn't do anything. And the minister, the uh, defense minister, that time Parikar, he told me, I met him personally, he said that Right to Information Act, few people asked for it, and it is uh, now in the, uh, it has become a legal debate and all, and uh, we have to sit and uh, sort out the thing and then I can let you know. By that time he left his uh, position and the new minister has come, and I couldn't do anything. But I think today we need that book to know that how the war was fought. Why I'm telling? I work in the northeast region, the Manipur and Nagaland. Nagaland, I constantly worked for two to three years with that difficulty, being a woman and all, but they helped me in every respect. There are NGOs are there, and one major general, he is very much interested on that. And he is all the time taking the credit that everything was done by the British. If you go to see the burial ground, you won't find any, uh, any name of the Indian National Army. And he practically negates the Indian National Army. So, in 2014, there was an opinion poll in Chelsea, the war museum in London. And the news came out, broke, that there was a poll opinion with the Battle of Normandy, Battle of Waterloo, and the Second World War. The maximum vote, the old retired generals and major generals were there, maximum vote went for the Second World War Battle of Manipur and Battle of Kahima. So if the Britishers are now today thinking that that was the best battle, and if they are, they must be having some intention behind it. I'm very, I'm rest assured. Because the moment they came to know that this lady, a Bengali lady, is working from one mountain to the other, going from one valley to the other in Nagaland, and in Manipur she is sitting all the time in Mairang and getting the details, that Robert Lyman, the general, who had written quite a lot of books, he showed, he there all the time wanted to mean that Shubhash was a very good political leader, but he never had any military acumenship. So better not to mix up Shubhash as a fighter or the leader of this uh, military side. Then I wrote a small article there in Nagaland and wanted to say that sometimes, you know, you don't need the gun and the <laughs> fighting ammunition. The brain itself works in that way. So within a one and a half year, if you can arrange so much of this, uh, this uh, secret service, and he had that thing, I mean that uh, competency to carry on. Anyway, Lyman is not liking me much. I came to know that in London also he spoke very ill about me, that this lady, she doesn't know anything and she's all the time claiming that this war is only for the Indian National Army. My only point was there that unless and until this Indian National Army was there with Muntagachi and Sate, Sake, with this German uh, generals, then the General Slim would not have won it because they have shown the ways. Nobody knows the underground tunnels of this. Even I used to get com confused there. I, being an Indian, getting the language also, sometimes I used to get confused. So our story is not ending because we have to find out and we have to fight back also. And we have to find out the book of uh, uh, Professor Gupta at the same time. And we must find what happened to the destiny of our Aine people. Very sad story. They had been sent as a POW in three ships, one to Madras, one to Chittagong, and one to Calcutta. Chittagong ship was diverted to Karachi. Madras, I haven't been. Some professors told me that a very sad story, but we have to scan. And Calcutta, in Barakpur area, they stayed for one week. And if they say Jai Hind or Shubhash Bosh, immediately one can hear the firing. I did four years' work in the oral history 
to find out the details. And then I got few papers from the British uh, uh, archives where the Burns is giving the instruction that these 30,000 POW will be taken from here to Multan, not touching the major stations of Bengal, that means Hawra and Sialda. It will go via Hali Shahar to Asansol, Asansol to Allahabad, Allahabad to this uh, Lucknow and those places, and ultimately it will reach Multan, that is the Pakistan board. And till now Pakistan hasn't done any research or any information or any exchange because our government hasn't done. And all the time if you say, no, they were Pakistanis, how could be they are Pakistanis? Northwest frontier doesn't mean that they are all Pakistanis. Many people, they came back. I mean, there are many refugees are here. So we are also trying to locate them, though it is late, but we have to find out that what happened to our, these comrades, uh, these uh, POW of the Indian National Army. And then we can complete the whole story of Shivas Chandra Bose. Thank you.